Welcome back. One of the must-see events down here in South Florida is the Miami Book Fair International. It goes on every single year. And joining us now is one of the featured storytellers who will be there this year, Carrie Sue Ibar. Carrie Sue? Carrie Sue, thank you so much for coming on the show. How are you? I'm fun. I'm fabulous. I'm here, so it's wonderful. You know, and you're a professional storyteller, so I almost want to say, we've got eight minutes. Tell us a story. Of course. That would be what my <laughs> grandfather would say. And this time I'll tell stories about the Miami Book Fair. 30 years. I remember the very first one. My dad, I don't think he ever missed one while he was still alive. We have stories to tell about the book fair, too. Yeah. So you're going to be, obviously, part of the book fair this yeah. year. And, uh, you know, you just mentioned that you were at the first one, and you, it was a big family thing for you. Why do you think it's such a wonderful event? It's such a great way to share our stories, and they're so diverse from around the world. My grandparents taught me I could actually travel around the world, back in time, into outer space, still make it back in time for supper through a story. How else can we do that? And that's what the Miami Book Fair is all about. You have authors, you have fabulous storytellers. I get to see friends I don't get to see. Kuniko Yamamoto is going to be there this uh, for Children's Alley. Uh, from J She's a Japanese storyteller. These are all friends. Emmy winning uh, Bobby Norfolk. Yay, he's going to be your Bill Lepp. Uh, children's storytellers. And me, I'll be telling Jewish stories. Jewish stories, yes. okay. Uh, Give me, give me one or give me a bit of a tease of one of the stories. I'm oh, telling. okay. In honor of my grandfather, who was a Talmudic scholar, this is where I learned all my storytelling from, was from my, uh, my grandparents, my parents, my teachers. They had no idea, but I was actually listening. And there, there's a, my grandfather would say, let me tell you a story. There was once an old couple, had a farm, but they had three sons. One farm, how do you split it up? So they knew exactly what to do. They'd have a contest, and they said, Whoever can fill the house within one hour will own, get the farm and run it. That's great. The oldest one went, no problem. He started bringing in all the animals. You can imagine the horse, nay, the cow, moo, the goats, meh, the chickens, <laughs> bawk, bawk, bawk. It was a mess. And he only filled up one little corner. So the next son said, okay, I got it. Not a problem. You talk to the animals, I'll do what feeds them. There's a lot of that. I know I'm feeding them every day. He filled up all the house with hay as much as he could. He got maybe half the house filled up. And it was the youngest one, the one who was the quietest one, but listening to all the stories that came before. He came in with a little bag that fit in his hand. His brothers looked at him, you can imagine. And then he pulled out from the bag candles and matches with which he filled the house with light. But not only did that, he do that, after he inherited the house, he invited his brothers and their wives and the children for Shabbos dinner every Friday night and after they would uh, light the, 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 the Shabbos lights, he would also fill the house with songs and stories, just like this one. Uh, great story. Thank you. That would be from my grandfather. I thought that you were going to say that he had a, a match and he burned the house down so nobody would win. That's, that that's <laughs> that like, wasn't from my side of the family. Now that's a yet another story. <laughs> and he, and he knew he wasn't going to win, so nobody should win. And the moral of the story is be a sore loser. Um, <laughs> so, so the stories that you tell, do you ever, do you sort of improv them on the spot? Always. Or? Yeah, yeah. They're, they're stories. I love folk tales, and I tell stories both in English as well as in Spanish. That's right. I can get tongue-tied in two languages. It's a gift. Uh, because I used to live in Mexico, and I love stories because they can connect us uno al otro, one to another, no matter what the languages are. So I tell stories uh, that I have read, that I've heard, and that all come through my own soul and mouth. So they're always a little bit improv because the story always changes depending who's right in front of you listening. Wow. Storytelling takes three parts. You, of course, have to have a story, otherwise you're talking about nothing, and Seinfeld already did that. You have to have the teller, because it's storytelling, but you have to have the listener. If you don't have the listener, you're just talking to yourself. Yeah, and uh, it's probably a great moment um, when you totally connect with the listener, you know? Uh, I've, I have remember, you know, stand-up comedy when you tell a joke and no one laughs and it's the worst feeling ever. So the opposite is probably really great. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And they'll get to see it for themselves at the Miami Book Fair. There's so many wonderful events that are happening there. And for Children's Alley, which is that Friday, Saturday, Sunday, the 21st, 22nd, 23rd of November, they have all kinds of things going on, but you have the storytelling tent, and I love the name, the Happily Ever After Stage. Wouldn't you want to go to such a place? Of course. It's not only yeah. air-conditioned, you have a place to sit and rest and just listen to stories in between things. 
It's wonderful. It's kind of nice. You just chill out and people tell you stories. That's exactly yeah. right. For all ages. So you're going to be at the event for how many days? I'm going to be there all three days, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I'll be telling stories Friday morning, okay. uh, Saturday afternoon, and Sunday afternoon. But I'll be there some of the rest of the time because I'm going to just listen. Just hanging out? Oh, yeah. plus the fact, here's my secret. I do all my holiday shopping there. Okay. You have all of these booksellers from every place. Any kind of book that you might be interested in, you can find at the book fair. Now, we don't have enough time to talk about all the awards that you've won. I, I was reading your bio, and I'm just thinking, do you, you need a house just for all of your hardware? Well, after this week, I just got some others. I won the Teaching Artist Recognition Award, which means a lot to me, because not only do I tell stories, I use it to convey messages and to teach from babies all the way through adults. And I just won the Broward Teaching Artist Award, and they got, they even gave me a sash. It was very, wonderful. Not very nice. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. And this, tell me uh, what this means. You ran away from home to join the circus. I did. Didn't you always want to do that? I, <laughs> I had teenagers at home, and I thought it made perfect sense. I really did. Uh, I joined the Big Apple Circus years ago when they started the Miami Children's Hospital uh, clown care unit. But I, and I did storytelling, mm -hmm. but as a clown, my name was. Doctor, ay caramba. Because they took one look at me and went, ay caramba. <laughs> nice. Think Pippi Longstocking with braids that you know, shot out like this. Can you juggle? I have tried. I have juggled my, my schedule, my family life, and my <laughs> storytelling, but that's as best as you I can You have do. A, a witty <laughs> quip for everything. I love it. You know what you should do? You should be a storyteller. <gasps> That's a great idea. Yeah. I think I might just do that and share these stories and find out others and share theirs too. There's an event. Uh, it's the Miami Book Fair. You should totally be part of that. I yeah. think that's a brilliant <laughs> idea. Hey, let's all go. Don't you think we should all go to the Miami Book Fair? We'll have a ball. It's a street party after all, at least those last three days. Do you uh, get starstruck by anyone? Is there anyone that, you're, that you'd love to meet or that you've met who's there that you just think, wow, so incredible? You know, it's the people that I meet every day. I don't really get starstruck because my grandmother was a singer and I grew up with people like Liberace, but I remember playing on the floor with him. Or Frank Sinatra wanted to take me home, but I was only four at the time. So I don't get real, and her, my grandmother's one of her closest friends was Pearl Bailey. So I grew up with a lot of very well-known people, but what I learned from them and I learned from my family that people are people and the most interesting ones are the ones you're with at that moment. Wow. I was, I, you know what? Time to end it. And what, <laughs> that was actually like perfectly magnificent. Okay, so let's do a couple of web, uh, websites. The book fair is MiamiBookFair.com, and your website is CarrieSueIvar.com. Okay. I figured I can remember my name. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you very much. You're amazing, and uh, have a great time at the book fair. Thank you very much. It was great meeting you. And this we'll was see fun. you again soon. And uh, you know, come back and tell us all the, the famous people that you know. Because what a what a list. I actually, this the family stories are the funniest ones of all. All right. Well, that's next interview. That's next interview. All right. Thank you.